Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Welcome to Hope Said Community Church. Today is yet another beautiful day out there, and I hope you're all enjoying today. This Sabbath, let's ponder upon a few words from the Bible. Psalm 16, uh, Psalms 116. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call upon him as long as I live. Let me repeat this verse, Psalms 116, verse 1. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. I hope this is uh, true in all our lives because God has heard all our prayers and our supplications according to his will. Because he has inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call upon him as long as I live. So let's keep this verse in our mind as we go throughout the Sabbath day and through the coming days. For our opening, let's all rise up and sing hymn number 412, Cover With His Love. Cover With His Life.
Let's bow down our heads for prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, creator of the universe, thou art the Lord worthy of worship. And there's none besides thee, O Lord. Thou art the most compassionate, merciful God, giver of everything that we enjoy in our lives. Help us, O Lord, to be thankful for the blessings. Help us to be thankful for the food, protection, and care you have given us during the past years. And help us to have the faith that you will be with us during the coming days as well. O oh, Father, forgive all the mistakes so that our prayers will be heard. Mm. We ask you, O oh Lord, to lead us away from all temptations of life mm -hmm. so that we'll be pure and holy when you come to take us yes, home. Lord. Yes. Oh Lord, at this time we thank you for bringing us together as a little family to praise your name and adore your name. Oh Lord, as we enter into the service, we ask you to help us to open our minds and our hearts so that we will learn from you. May the words each person talks here be from you, from your throne, so that we will apply it in our lives and be ready to meet you when you come. Keep us all safe. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 In continuing of our worship, so today's mission spotlight is Turning the Other Cheek by Rick McEdward. Omar, a university student in the Middle East, desperately needed a job, but he wasn't ready to do anything to get hired. During a job interview, he openly told the company representative that he could not work on Saturdays because it was his holiday. The company representative did not blink. That's fine, he replied. We don't need you. It was true. National unemployment was so high that the company really didn't need Omar. Many people were looking for work and it would be easy to find someone willing to work on Saturdays. Sadly, Omar left the company's office. Omar was a new believer who had just earlier had given his life to Christ. He had mingled with believers for six years and searched the Bible before making his decisions. After the job rejection, he bought a three-wheeled cart with a plan to make money by selling cement, a circular bread covered with sesame seeds. Omar's Sabbath-keeping friends were touched by his faithful stand for Jesus and began to pray for him. A few days later, Omar announced excitedly that the company had called him back and offered him the job with Saturday off. He was so excited that he decided to find at least one person a day to tell about Christ. Isn't it wonderful? Yeah. Yeah. Sipping a drink at a local cafe, a few days later, he and an elderly man began to talk about religion. Omar shared his journey from his family's traditional holy book to the Bible and incredible peace that he had found. As Omar left the cafe, the old man who had overheard the conversation from a nearby table followed him. I can't believe that you could say such things, the man yelled. Are you not ashamed? You grew up in our country and know better. The man began to beat Omar with his fists. Later that day, when a Sabbath-keeping friend video called Omar, he was greeted by a large swollen eyes and an uh, and even larger smile of joy. You could have called the police, the friend said. Yes, Omar said, but Jesus tells us to turn the other cheek. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you not to resist an evil person. But whosoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other to him also. That is in Matthew 5, 38 and 39. Isn't it wonderful, friends, that how Omar was an ambassador for Jesus? Last week, I think we, uh, we remembered that this man who took a drink at the White House was a, a glass of water, was an ambassador to the president, Jimmy Carter. 
So yeah, we know that standing for Jesus will not go in vain. All our little efforts that we put, all our baby steps that we put forward to walk in the way of Jesus or in Christ is not in vain. Jesus, uh, what do you say? Uh, um, he uh, he respects every cho every choice of us and he rewards us faithfully because he is faithful in all his uh, uh, to all our generations, even to the end of the world. He is, he said, "I will be with you," because he is faithful. Thank you. Amen. Amen. The lesson study topic is He died for us. The memory text goes this way. It's from John 3, 14 and 15. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so much the Son of Man shall be lifted up, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. May God be with us as Pastor Jeffrey Paul leads out in this lesson study today. Abisada Church. Abisada. I really thank uh, Sister for praying the beautiful prayer. I was really very touched by it. You we have prayed many times, okay, but uh, that was really a touching prayer that I liked it very much. And of course, the song that we sang for the opening song, Cover With This Life, okay, Whiter Than Snow, was one of the most beautiful songs. That's one of my favorite, too. Uh, and of course, God is so gracious once again on this beautiful. Uh, uh, Sabbath morning that we could join together uh, praising and upholding his holy name. And I'm telling you very honestly, this is one of the most spiritual experiences as soon as I enter this house. I don't know, uh, this is my personal opinion. Uh, you know, I could see the real spiritualness in every activity which happens here. Uh, okay, it is absolutely very straight and uh, uh, more solemn and uh, I do enjoy uh, being in fellowship with Hopeside Church and all of you people. I'm telling you, Okay, he has blessed me with all of you, and uh, we praise God for everyone who has been able to watch online too and be a part of Hopeside Church. And we continue to pray for one another, uphold in this very last days of time. The Lord might be able to spend it. In fact, uh, you know, one thing as I was going through my studies and things like that, uh, when I worship here, you know, one thing comes to my mind. You know, what is that? What should what, what, what experience? I don't know, but one thing is I remember the first century Christians. Going home to home and worshiping. And you know one thing? I'm going to preach this sermon one day. In the last days, everything is going to be completely vanished. And the only thing, the churches are going to be completely downtrodden. And you and I will be worshiping in the home. And the days are not so far away. And I think so. The Lord, in His own infinite mercy, will get us to that point. Okay. Uh, that we'll be able to join together, make the worship more meaningful, more like a family, and uh, things like that. And let's hope and pray the Lord will be able to bless us today as we go through lesson six. And thank you for that introduction. He died for us will be uh, the topic that we have today. And the memory text is taken from John chapter 3, 14 and 15. And what is so significant about this verse? We all have read this verse many times, right? Beautifully, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. We all know the story. Where were the children of Israel? In the wilderness. In the wilderness. What happened there? What happened there? They ate too much. Okay, they ate too much. Okay, something happened after that. What was that? They were struck by the serpent. Why? Were they been able to be beaten by the serpent? They complained. They murmured. But they murmured. They complained where? In the wilderness. And then the serpent took over them, right? Okay. God allowed, the God allowed the serpents to come and bite them and things like that. Okay, fine. Okay, now let's get into a very important aspect of it. Okay. Don't ever forget, number one, they were in the wilderness. Number two, in the wilderness, we have a lot of animals and whole lot of things are coming up. And number three, in the wilderness experience, instead of looking up to heaven for the help, they were 
murmuring and what? Grumbling. What was lacking in them? Faith. Faith. What does the Bible say regarding faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for. That's a beautiful definition of faith. But what is the meaning of faith? Any idea? Without faith, you can never see God. That makes sense? So what happened? What the Lord is trying to teach the children of Israel is to be dependent on Him. In the last days, you and I will be carried in the wilderness, not to put us into problem or difficulty, but to experience the power of God. That makes sense? Um, you know, in our family, family we're back you know, here in uh, oh, Holloway Drive, and uh, me, myself, and uh, you know Charles and Sister Bernadette. And I was just talking to the Charles yesterday, and I was telling Sister Bernadette is not so well after the son left home. Is that so? I didn't know about that. Uh, I, I, I felt it, and I was uh, telling uh, uh, yeah, I felt it. Oh, my personal thing, you know. I felt uh, Sister uh, is. Uh, and, uh, you know, not that, uh, you know, very, I feel, you know, she's not so active after the son left. But most probably, she will have that, uh, you know, naturally, mothers, you know, when my mother's my wife, love. Yeah, mother's love is always uh, so this thing, okay? One thing I just want to ask you in the name of Jesus, when the children of Israel were traveling in the wilderness, they forgot that the father was there with them. One thing is absolutely very much sure. Why do you think so Jesus came down to this earth? What was the mission? What was the mission of Jesus Christ? Why was he born? So he can have a repent. 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 Mm -hmm. And turn back to God. Turn back to God. You know, I do give this definition. Jesus was born to die. Mm -hmm. And that's what we'll be able to read in this week's lesson. Okay, somebody said, we can never avoid two things. One is death and one is taxes. <laughs> right? One is death and one is taxes. Taxes, somehow we can be able to avoid. No problem. Uh, somehow we can manipulate and get things done. We have loopholes here and there. And we have accountants. So you give them 100 bucks or 200 bucks or 500 bucks. And somehow turn and say, okay, it is fine. But death? No chance, right? It's for everybody. It's for everybody. It is inevitable. Okay. We might be able to procrastinate that for a few years. Oh. Escape from cancer. Escape from, uh, you know, a whole lot of things. Or if you have an accident, most probably go to the hospital, be recovered, right? Many chances. But sometimes. God's time we go. Oh, okay. God's time to go. Yeah, that's right. But what I mean to say, sometimes we can procrastinate by doing a whole lot of stuff in order to avoid, but sooner or later, we have, to go. we have to go. There is no option, right? When God says to go. Okay. When He calls me, I will, go. Go. I will answer. Here am I, Lord. Here am I, Lord. Take me. <laughs> I, I, I'll be so strong enough to say that one. Okay, I wish all humanity would have stayed in stating that. Wow, here am I, Lord. Please take me. No. Okay, it's a scary thing. Because the life we're going to live on this earth is just once and all. And once, that's all. There is no second chance of living on this earth at all. But thank God for the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. Even though we die, we are going to have a, a better place with a better people and the better circumstances with a better situation. Does that make sense? This world is not my home, we're just passing through. But, if you and I have to win the victory of death, we have to follow Jesus Christ. So that's the reason I told you, why was Jesus born? To die. To die. So if you and I are in sin, even though we are born, don't ever forget, death is inevitable, but praise be to God, that just in the wilderness, even though our faith like the children of Israel is absolutely feeble, even though our faith is absolutely very little, even though we have never trusted, even though we have sinned, even though we have gone astray, even though in whatever the condition we might be able to, but just like, fine, it has happened, it has gone, you can never go back again. Life is like a radio, not like a tape recorder. Tape recorder, what happens? CD, you can rewind, right? But in a radio, once it is passed through, okay, that's it. You will never get back again. 
So life is that way. But what happens? We can't be able to live in the past. Neither will be able to live in the future. Yes, we have to live for the future. I'm not saying no. But living in the present time, looking up to Jesus Christ. Just like the children of Israel, okay? Because the snake bit them in every angle, they were about to die. The poison ran into their body physically. But just like Moses, God instructed Moses to lift what? The serpent up. And if anyone will be able to look up to the serpent which was lifted by the hands of Moses given by Jesus Christ, okay, he will be saved. What a beautiful analogy. So as Jesus also was been able to be lifted up, you see what happens? The book of Hebrews says very clearly, Son of Man also has to be lifted up. That symbolizes in every angle that if you and I could be able to lift up Jesus, where could we find Jesus being lifted up actually? Well, I, I on the earth, at the cross, that's cross. That's absolutely. He was never lifted up. Listen to this one. He was never ever lifted up while he was there on this earth. That make sense? That's the reason. The Bible says it very clearly. From the foundation of this world, the Lamb was slain. What does it mean? We find that in Revelation chapter 30, verse 8, Acts chapter 2, verse 23. All who dwell on the earth should worship him, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. What does it mean? Yes, sir, Brother Charles. So does that, well, you, <laughs> you asked a question, but I was just um, thinking. So mm -hmm. that means that mean his life was predestinated. Mm -hmm. From the foundation of the world, mm -hmm. like since time began, mm -hmm. he was predestined to that. Mm -hmm. What does it mean? What does it mean to you? What does it signal in your mind? Before the foundation well, of this earth was being laid, the land was slain. Well, God know, God who knows everything, he uh -huh. knows exactly that mm -hmm. man will fall. Mm -hmm. And he, he made that preparation that was in place, mm -hmm. that was set in place. Mm -hmm. To be honest with you, you know, the book of Revelation is full of symbols. A lot of symbols, right? When there's a lot of symbols in the book of Revelation, many a times you and I will not be able to venture into every aspect of it. But one thing is for sure, when it is symbolic, it seems to understand for you and me that the plan of salvation has been put before the plan of creation is all about. For every positivity, there's a negativity, right? Anything happens, what can be done? Okay, anything goes wrong, what is the alternative? Okay, we as human beings, we always do have, right? God always had an alternative. Like for example, the children of Israel, in the wilderness, they were not supposed to do that, but they have done, and servants have bitten them, and there has to be an alternative, right? You and I have been able to sin, we are supposed to be doomed to hell, Never could be able to have the relationship with Christ, but there has to be an alternative, right? Okay, like for example, the wages of sin is death. That is inevitable. Now what happens, sir? There has to be an alternative for this life and eternal life. So for everything, there is an alternative given in the word of God. So what God is trying to say for you and me is, there was an alternative provided by God, the triune of God, before the foundation of this earth. If you have to go to the book of Titus, chapter 1, verse 2, it teaches about how long ago the plan of salvation, which centered in Christ's death, had been taking place. The plan for a redemption was not an afterthought, a plan formulated after the fall of Adam. It was an unfolding of the principles that from eternal ages have been the foundation of God's throne. Ellen White writes it in the Desire of Ages, page 22. The simple phenomena, what God was trying to say is, the plan of salvation was revealed when? Have you have any idea? When was the first time the plan of salvation was revealed? At the Garden of Eden. Okay, can you remember the text where it, where it is found? Genesis, uh, no. Genesis. Genesis 3.15. Yes, Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. The first gospel was being preached where? In the Garden of Eden to Adam and Eve. It was typified that every blood sacrificed throughout the Old Testament pointed out to be the symbol that Jesus will come down and die for you and me. 
that's one of the reasons. In Genesis chapter 22, verse 11 to 30, we talk about Abraham's faith, right? What happened? Where was his faith tested? The children of Israel's faith was tested in the wilderness. Uh, where was Abraham's faith tested? Mount Moriah. Mount Moriah, absolutely. Okay. And uh, uh, what happened in Mount Moriah? Sacrifice his son. Sacrifice his son. Uh, then what happened? Did he sacrifice? He provided a ram. He provided a ram. That is the beauty. Isaac. You know, another meaning of Isaac is Jesus. Laughter. Laughter? Yeah, absolutely right. Okay. The symbolic meaning for Isaac is Joseph, which means Jesus. Which means he's a typified person who volunteered himself to sacrifice himself. You know, what did Isaac do when Abraham said, You are, you, you are the lamb? What did he say? Jesus, what did he say when he was supposed to? He knew when he was at the age of 20, so Jesus knew that he was going on the cross of Calvary. There was no option at all. He knew that very much. So, simple phenomena, what the Bible is telling is, which is recorded in John chapter 1, verse 29. The whole plan of salvation is the substitutionary death of Jesus, symbolized for century by animal sacrifice. Each one, a symbol of Jesus' death on the cross, and as the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. Who said this word? He is the Lamb of God who taketh away John the Baptist. sins of the world. John, John the Baptist is the one. When did he say that? At the, At the baptism of Jesus Christ. Christ. Okay, and the Jordan Sweeper. Okay, and that is the greatest aspect of our life that if you and I will be able to accept to be Jesus to be our personal Savior, and He is the one who will be able to take it away. Okay, the sins of this world. Any, any, question, any question in this? Okay, I'm just summarizing the whole thing just in a few minutes. Okay, any question? Anything to contribute? Yes, this is Sonia. He brought out a point where the Israelites were out there, but they did not trust God. Mm -hmm. Why didn't they trust God? Um, in the same way, the angels are also surprised mm -hmm. uh, when they look at us and see, oh, these Christians, they have the word of God. They have so many promises in the Bible, mm -hmm. yet they don't trust God and they cry out and leave God. During disasters or when they face problems, mm -hmm. just like the Israelites, we mm -hmm. look at the Bible and say, "Why did they have faith? Mm -hmm. They should have had faith." Mm -hmm. But when it comes to us, it's always a more practical way of putting it, right? Right? Uh, and uh, yeah, if I have to ask this question very personally, I don't need anyone to answer. But uh, how much of faith do we really possess? Have you ever questioned yourself? Have I questioned myself? You know, the Bible says it very clearly. The mustard seed of faith. So which means the Bible says for you and me who have studied this word of God who come so faithfully as Adventists who are waiting for the second coming of Christ is telling me that your faith is not even what? Mustard seed. What happened? A preface to the cross. So I have a mm -hmm. comment on this uh, memory text. Mm -hmm. It's very near and dear to me mm -hmm. and maybe to all the medical persons mm -hmm. who are working in the medical field mm -hmm. because one of the symbol is the cross mm -hmm. that is uh, with the snake, snake around yeah, it. Yeah. And uh, so whenever I am disheartened, mm -hmm. sad mm -hmm. or uh, committed uh, unpardonable, not a man, committed yes. a sin, mm -hmm. I can look up to Christ and say that I believe in him so I can have eternal life. Yeah, praise God. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the testimony. I appreciate uh, that very much. Jesus was born to die and lived to die. Every step that he took brought him closer to the great atoning sacrifice on the cross of Calvary. Fully conscious of his mission, he did not allow anyone or anything to distract him from it. In reality, his whole life was a preface to his death on the cross. Wow. I can't just imagine this one for the chance. Mm. Mm. Just imagine if I come to know tomorrow I'm going to have an accident. Oh, my. Mm. Sister Bernadette, just imagine tomorrow I'm going to have an accident exactly at 12.35. What will I do? Panic attack. One, number one. <laughs> number two. You yeah. try to avoid in every possible way. Just imagine three years from now, exactly, most probably 20, okay, 2023 January, okay, 15th, I'm going to have a cancer if I would know that. Question God. Okay, and then? 
Hey, listen to this beautiful thought. Jesus knew every inch what he is going to go through. He knew exactly how his life is going to be the three and a half years of his ministry. And forget about the three and a half years of ministry. When he was at the age of 12 itself, he sensed it out very clearly that every step he is going to take, he knew he could foresee. You know, sometimes I always feel, thank God, God never revealed the future to me. I and the Charles was discussing, like, you know, um, uh, I said, uh, you know, uh, when our children get married, it's the happiest occasion, right? At the same time, for father, a uh, mother, it is, uh, it is, it is, you know, we, it's not that we are not happy, but what I'm going to say is, you know, there is a lot of st stuff going on. You cry and, uh, you know, weeps together, most probably to get, you know, the thought out of it because the daughter or the son was there with us for so long time. And now they become so independent and I know that slowly they will not disintegrate. Okay, they will not communicate and hold a lot of stuff and things like that. How do you feel? Just that part of it. Very sad. Very sad. Jesus knew every inch of faith. That's what the desire of faith is tells from pen of inspiration by Sister White. How could he be able to just move forward, Sister? How could he just take all those stuff and just go forward? It's, it's a very beautiful text that you read. Mm. Fully conscious of his mission. Fully conscious of he it. He did not allow anyone or uh -huh. anything to distract him distract from Distract him at all. Beautiful. Uh, one thing I would like to say is, our life on this earth, uh -huh. how much is it maximum? Uh -huh. 80? 100? Uh, no, yeah. three score and 10 days. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, imagine that we are going to live for 100 years. So we know that after 100 years, we are not going to live anymore. It is like God revealing us that our time is short here. But do we do this? Will we be distracted with this world? Uh, that, 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 that's a very practical question. You know, if I have to ask another way, uh, Sister Sonia, I can ask you and say that. Uh, what is that distracting us for not looking up to Christ? What is that we are trying to lose hope now? Okay, or what is that situation which is crushing us to not be able to walk in the path of righteousness? What is that situation which is allowing us to not come to Christ? What is that distraction that is allowing us to not worship the way how He wants us to? What is that little distractions or situations or circumstances that is withholding us uh, to not? have that mustard seed of faith in him in whatever the situation that we be able to face. I, I would okay, say the ready. pressures of sin. That's that what? is what distracting us. Distracting, right? From all angles. Okay. Pressures of sin means everything. Like I want to have a car, a house, all that stuff. Everything. <laughs> so that's why I said pressures of sin. Pressures of sin. Okay. Now what can we learn from this one? When you and I are Christians, which means you and I are the disciples of Christ. If you and I are the disciples of Christ, then we have to be able to, at least to a certain extent, follow its footsteps. So, the one beautiful lesson that we can give in whatever the situation, even at the point of death, let us emulate the footsteps of Jesus Christ. Yes, and Jesus said, uh, and Jesus knew that this world is not his home. Uh -huh. he, he very well knew that. Uh -huh. And although we also know that this world is not our home, uh -huh. still we strive for these earthly pleasures and earthly treasures. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. What God is trying to teach for you and me is this. We are talking about death, you know, for the whole quarter. Many times it is so sickening to even think about death. But don't ever forget, that is the reality of life. I'm telling you, go to Ukraine. Only death. Go to Somalia. Only death. Now South Korea, North Korea. Very soon, you're going to hear about only death. What about China, India, Pakistan? You are going to hear only about death. Okay, what about the future days? Is only talking about much more the reality of life is death. Jesus was born to die because of you and I have sinned and there is inevitability that we have to go to the three by six place. Okay, that is the permanent place. That's, that's the truth. But that should not distract us. That should, be, that, that should enable each one of us to just lift up our heads and look into the cross. That's the only thing that you and I should be able to learn. And then only the death on the cross will become meaningful in your life and in my life. Go a little bit further. 
Look into the words of Jesus while he was hanging on the cross. The last words he said. What did he say? The last word. It is finished. It is finished. We have a song of that. Okay. What was finished? Yeah. You see, it is beautifully written. Listen to this one. The crucial moment for Christ, for humankind, and for the whole universe that arrived. With deep agony, he struggled against the powers of darkness. Slowly he made his way through the Garden of Gethsemane. Through his unfair trials and up to the mountain of Calvary. You know, it says even angels were trying to overcome him. While Jesus was hanging on the cross, the chief priests and the scribes and the elders mocked him saying, He saved others, himself he cannot save. If he is the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross and will believe him. Wow. Children of Israel in the wilderness, they wanted to see to believe. The scribes and the Pharisees, they wanted to see to believe. But the problem with the Pharisees and Sadducees is, they saw the miracles of Jesus, they did everything, and still they didn't believe. Even the children of Israel, while they were in the, in the, in the, in the wilderness experience, God gave them every aspect of food, water, their protection. The very two things, the pillar of clouds and the pillar of fire, 24 into 7, 12 into 12 hours, they were there guiding. And Jesus was there. The mountain was parted. They witnessed everything, but still they didn't believe. Same thing with the Pharisees. And now they're asking for the last chance. I'm going to believe now. Just imagine if Jesus would have saved himself from the cross of Calvary. Do you think so? The Pharisees and Sadducees would have believed? No. That abstain Jesus not dying on the cross of Calvary? No. no. They will in a victory to Satan. They will say that he is devil possessed. Absolutely. You know, that's what humanity. You know, there was a beautiful thing. You know, the whole world is looking for peace, right? The whole world is looking for peace now. We agree with that? The whole world is in a turmoil? Okay. Somebody said that. If the whole world needs peace, there is only one way. Go to God. You know? Hmm. You know, when can we be able to find peace? When we die. When we die. <laughs> That's right. Somebody said this way. The humanity is the one which is cause, causing what? Violence. Who is the problem for violence? Humanity. humanity. When humanity is removed, there is peace on earth. But there won't be anybody. Only mm -hmm. animals and birds will be. There will be peace. There will be a peace. So who is disrupting peace? peace? Humanity. What happens with Jesus here? What happens with Jesus? Jesus said this kingdom is not the way it is supposed to. My kingdom is entirely different. If I am supposed to rule, it is not going to be the way how it is happening now. What Jesus is trying to say is when he says it is finished, there are three important elements. Never forget this one. Number one. Number one. What was finished? Number one. The work which was assigned. You, you remember the foundation of the world we are talking about? Okay, dying on the cross of Calvary, born to die, all the mockery and all those things for Jesus. You know, he said, that is over. Number one. Number two, what was finished? Okay, you, you know the one thing, Ellen White says it very clearly. Satan had an opportunity to be forgiven of his sins at the cross of Calvary. Yeah, but he, yeah. When he says it is finished, Opportunity for you to come back to me again. The probation is absolutely closed for you. Number two. For who? For Satan. Number three. What was finished? What was finished? It's work on earth. Okay, work on earth is absolutely fine, but anyone who believes in Jesus Christ will have an opportunity that 
His alignment with Satan is over. You remember the same three finished with which said when Jesus comes before he could come the second time? He is now there in the most holy place, right? Pleading on your behalf or my behalf. And you know it is going to say the same thing, it is done. We know that song, right? It is done. What was done? Three important aspects what we read on this earth is going to be repeated once again. What I'm going to say is this, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Jesus, a long-suffering Christ, Jesus was defeating the kingdom of Satan. And don't ever forget, Paul says it very clearly, we fight against what? Principalities and rulers of what? Darkness. Unseen powers. Crying from the cross, it is finished. Christ implied not only that his agony had come to an end, uh, but also especially that he had won the great cosmic historic controversy against uh, Satan and his evil forces. All heaven triumphed in the Savior's victory. Satan was defeated and knew that his kingdom was absolutely lost. That is the beauty. When he said, it is finished. And no wonder you and I know that he died for you and me, right? John chapter 1, verse 29. Behold the Lamb of God who taketh away the sins of the world. The statement acknowledges Christ as the antitypical Lamb of God to whom all two sacrifices of the Old Testament had point out. Point out. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. And there's more. If but one soul would have accepted the gospel of his grace, Christ, Christ would to say that one have chosen his life toil and humiliation and his death of shame would have been more satisfying. How many? Just one person. Just one person coming to the cross of Calvary and be saved will be the heaven's joy. Will be the heaven's joy for just one. One person coming. So for the whole heaven, if one person is important, just imagine for you and me the greatest task given for the gospel commission to be preached. Then. How many persons is needed? Just how many? One. one person. Jesus came down to seek and save me. Last, I want to ask you this most practical question. How many years of life that you and I are Christians? How many years of life they have studied the word of God? How many years that you and I have been accepting Jesus to be a personal savior? Have you ever thought to save one person in your lifetime? Yeah. And that's your mission. Yeah. Commission. Commission and commission. Right? For every one of us, not only pastors, every one of us. You see? Let us put this practical question. Where I stand? You know, for every time when I have a little small job, whenever I go, I always look an opportunity to talk about uh, Christ's love. You know, when people come here for my work and things like that, they, there are drunkards who come. But later on, an interesting story. A person came. He was so drunk, he didn't have money. He didn't know what to do. He was hungry, I guess. I sensed it out somehow. And I called him and I gave some food. And uh, before he could go, he shed a little tears for me. He said, God bless you. And hope I'll be able to leave this, you know, drinking habit from today. Wow. That's sweet. What I want to say is this. We have a responsibility to show kindness to people. Accept them as they are. If Jesus would have accepted you the way how you are, accept people as they are. Don't accept people only when they change. Changing is not your responsibility and my responsibility. That is the responsibility of the Holy Spirit. Don't take the place of the Holy Spirit to change anyone. But God has sent a person to you, accept him as he is, and treat him with kindness, with gratitude, and with thanksgiving. And I'm telling you, that one soul, that one soul, just one soul, if you and I could be able to amend ourselves with, I'm telling you, the 
whole heaven will be happy for you because you've been able to be an ambassador for Christ in India. Last but not the least, the meaning of the cross. The cross of Christ is the very center of salvation's history. Eternity can never fathom the depth of love revealed in the cross of Calvary. It was there that the infinite love of Christ and the unbounded selfishness of Satan stood face to face. While Christ was humbly offering himself as a ransom for the human race, Satan was selfishly engulfing him in suffering and agony. Christ did not die just a natural death that every human being has to face. He died the second death so that all those who accept him will never have to experience it for themselves. That is the beauty of what cross means for you and me. Christ not only died the first death, but he died what? Second. The second death. Why? So that you and I will not Taste what that second death is all about. Uh, and that is designated for Satan and his angels. Do you remember? It is finished. What was finished? The, the seal. It was seen. What was seen? Satan know. and his angel will be there ever clean for the second death. So God is trying to tell you and me that I don't want you to take part in that second death. Which is death for eternity but the death we are talking about today the first death is for a moment it is like connected like sleep sleep that's what we read, uh, that's what we studied last week right okay death is connected as sleep but if you and i forget to lift up jesus and lift up to him and lift up our heads up to the cross of calvary and then uh, what happens? Ultimately, what is designed for Satan and his angels, you and I will be able to be one. But praise God, Jesus, in his own infinite mercy, has won the second death for you and me. And no wonder, in Acts chapter 4, verse 17, the Bible says, uh, there is no other name on this earth that you and I could be saved, except the name of by the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 That is the beauty of today's lesson. Any questions? Yeah, I have a, not a question, <laughs> uh, but I have something which I I, uh, I learned through uh, Bible study. Uh, I I have this is my opinion. Okay, Jesus died to accomplish greater work than buying my pardon. Pardon is different, and forgiveness is different. Okay. Then I feel Jesus died to fix what Adam broke in man. Okay, that is in 1 Corinthians 15, 22 and Romans 5, 18 and 19. Then the second, third. Jesus died to destroy him who had the power of death. So that is what? That is in Hebrews 2, 14 and 15. Then Jesus died to destroy the works of Satan. That is in 1 John 3, 8. Then, Jesus died to abolish death and bring life and immortality to light. That is in 2 Timothy 1, 10. He died, then the last one is, he died to purge our sin by himself. Okay, that is in Hebrews 1, 3. Then, he died to recreate in himself a new humanity that is completely free from sin and temptation. That is in uh, Ephesians 2, 10, 4, 24, Colossians 3, 10, and 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Absolutely, absolutely. That sums up the whole thing. That sums up the whole thing, as I said, as we come to the conclusion of the Sabbath school lesson. It's a simple phenomenon that Jesus had a mission to complete so that you and I could have an opportunity that we could be part of him so that the words where Jesus said in John chapter 3 verse 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son for whosoever believeth in him you should not what? perish but have everlasting life may God bless us as we come to pray on this one yes yes sister tell me. Jesus 
today's lesson is about he died for us mm -hmm. of course jesus has died for each one of us so we will have salvation mm -hmm. once again being in this medical field i have seen so much death and die mm -hmm. it really is so hard to watch at the last breath goes away from the patient mm -hmm. it's so hard mm -hmm. it's so close to heart mm -hmm. now I am saying that, and going through different states in this United States, I have seen some older people, mm -hmm. some really godly people, have said before they could die, they always asked for uh, uh, anointing, mm -hmm. and they have asked for forgiveness of mm -hmm. their sins, and if it is their time to go, that they will go happily. Mm -hmm. But I have seen some few. Saints on earth have really gone like that, and also some people who in the uh, media ministry in the Adventist faith have had some uh, diseases that made them to go from this earth very soon. But they always said, you know, the last words were. That Jesus is coming soon. Mm -hmm. So, with all this that I have to put together, my personal testimony is: God, please forgive all my sins, any uh, unconfessed sin or nourished or cherished sin. But when you, uh, when it is time for me to go, mm -hmm. as we have said, He died for us. I always say, Lord, remember me. Thank you very much. Okay, now um, I can add just one more before I could conclude. Always be in the work of Christ 24 into 7. Yes. Make sense? Yes. So that what happens? When you are engaged in God's work, not that 24 hours you take the Bible and preach, I'm not talking about that. Wherever you are, represent God. That's all. I don't know how you're going to represent. Okay, God will be able to show you who is that person, how is the person in your work, in your daily activities. Always keep on representing God in every angle of life. I'm telling you, as you have been able to walk with God every time, just like Enoch walked with God and he was taken to heaven, and just the way how you'll be able to walk with God and be able to evangelize and get things done, we'll be able to reach there. Okay. There is a beautiful saying I'm going to come to this. So sometimes there's a lot of temptation for preachers, you know, they have a lot of thoughts coming up. Okay. Kingdom of heaven is like this. For a rich man, we have to kick him to go to the kingdom of heaven. Why? You have any idea? So much money. Money is there. You know. For the poor man, it is not that way. You don't need to kick him. Okay? What do you have to do for poor man? He just go. Okay? No. Give him. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. He will not just go. You have to somehow give him something, right? Okay? Food or something so that he might be full, so that he might be able to. Okay. But kingdom of God is not like that, like a rich or a poor. Kingdom of, kingdom of God is just like a little child who slips into the kingdom of God. Does that make sense? No. That's the reason you have a lot of stories. Jesus said, be like what? Little kingdom. Little kingdom. What does it mean? simple phenomena he says that if you and I can never be like children, you and I can never inherit the kingdom of God. God bless each one of us. That is my will be connected. So that's a very beautiful uh, okay, lesson from that. Uh, okay, this week he died for us. Uh, what was astonishing is Jesus knew his future life every time, but still he never ever uh, he was distracted in any angle. Uh, okay, he was not distracted in any angle. He, he was completely committed uh, to make sure that the mission was been able to complete in his life. So let us also uh, to make sure that our mission on this earth for Christ will be completed and we will hasten his coming. That's my prayer for you okay, this morning. Let's seek the Lord in prayer. Gracious God in heaven, we want to thank you for all the blessings of your life. Thank you for the beautiful lesson that we could learn from you. Jesus on the cross of Calvary. Give us an opportunity to be nourished spiritually so that we could enjoy every day in and day out to be in your ministry. So, that, oh Father, we know that saving souls will be the greatest uh, uh, testament to humanity so that we could be able to pass this one without any difficulty. 
is our heaven. May your spirit and may each one of our hearts us. Uh, your children, O oh Father, may we always do your will. So that, O oh Father, uh, that one day when Jesus comes the second time, we'll have an opportunity to go home with him. Thank you, Lord, for being with us and answering our prayers as well. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being with us for the Sabbath school. And uh, we'll just take a break and we'll be back for the divine.